Hey folks, this is Ben with Road to VR, and I'm here with Jeff from Zeissen, which is making a smartphone head-mounted display clip-in, um, and he's going to be taking it to Kickstarter soon. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the product and maybe the the prototype phase? Sure. Uh, this is the uh, probably the fourth 3D printed prototype that we've had. Um, it, what makes it unique is that you can swap out the the stereo lenses with the mono lens. Um, which basically just opens it up to more, you know, different applications, and um, it's more usable off the bat because yeah, you exactly. don't need immediate developer support. Right, right. Yeah, it's definitely usable out of the box because um, you can basically use any full screen apps mm -hmm. with it or content or what have you. And what devices are you aiming to be able to <coughs> fit in there? Uh, Right now, the pr this prototype fits the HTC One, the Galaxy S3, Galaxy S4. Uh, the next prototype and the final one will also house um, any of the iPhones, basically iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 5C, and 5S. Uh, the Galaxy Notes, uh, Note 2 and 3 at least, um, and probably Note 1. Um, and basically any phone uh, up to about a five and a half inch screen uh, as long as it doesn't have like a slide-out keyboard, so it's not too thick. Uh, basically, most most modern phones should fit in. Okay, and can <laughs> I put it on and give it a shot? Absolutely. So we're gonna have a look at the product. This will be my first time trying it, and I'm just going to talk as I go and, and see what it's like. This is gonna be the first one that I've tried, but there are a couple others on the market that people have probably seen. So I'm in this shadow gun demo, and my walking direction is defined by my looking direction which is cool, and I'm really pretty impressed with the uh, low latency here. You know, this feels like what I'm used to on a PC, not on a mobile device, so that's really impressive. Um, when I look left and right, though, of course, since this is just standard side-by-side -side content, um, and we have lenses that are warping the image here, um, when I turn left and right, the world's kind of warping to some extent, but an application made specifically for this device would not have that problem, correct? Right. The field of view is probably somewhere 60 degrees, would you say? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I was thinking 65-ish, but uh -huh. yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. And obviously a bigger screen phone, like the, the Note, would give you a wider field of view. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, we're running at, you know, well over 30 FPS here in the Shadow Gun demo, which is great. And looks pretty good. It took me a little while to get my, uh, you know, vision to be sharp. I had to, my eyes had to get used to, you know, lining up the images correctly. But again, that's something that with the proper application shouldn't be an issue, right? Right. And in the next uh, prototype, and certainly in the final product, uh, there'll be a, more adjustments for the lenses. This one has a left-right adjust, but it doesn't have a, a depth yeah. adjustment. But I am getting the 3D. There's definitely a sense of height in here. Um, but at the moment, it does feel like um, like if, I, if I'm... It kind of feels like I'm looking at a side-by-side -side video and then trying to cross my eyes to get the images to align. They're not um, just focusing right at infinity, but that's due to this just being straight-up standard side-by-side -side content, I, I believe, right. right? Yeah. It would also be the... I don't know if the lenses need to be more adjusted left to right. That... Typically, if your eyes are having trouble uh, getting the two images to line up, um, it's a, a left-right adjustment. Uh -huh. I'm really impressed with the latency. It feels really good, especially for, you know, the gyros and accelerometers and phones are meant for orientation and some basic tracking, but not, they're not really designed to be straight up, you know, what you need for VR, but this right, is right. really good. This mm -hmm. is, feels, I don't really see any perceptible lag here. So that's really impressive. Um, yeah, I'd be really, really interested to see once there is a you know dedicated application that knows that you've got this on your right. face to see because I feel like that would really help with the you know you get the cameras rendering at the right mm -hmm. distance your eyes are focusing far away. Right. But yeah, when it is sharp and it's up close, this is really cool. You can see outside of the world right now. Yep, and here's your marker if you want to hold that in your hand. My field of view is a little bit limited, of course, because the camera only has a certain field of view. So I'm holding a marker here, and uh, it is augmenting this marker with the 
character of a troll. Actually pretty detailed. And when the tracking is working, it looks nice. But it does jump around a little bit just because I'm bending, you know, and lighting and right. markered augmented reality is uh, that's the way to go. It'll work with basically any augmenting augmented reality app. The benefit is, of course, that your hands are free. Mm -hmm. You know, so if a few people were were wearing them, you could potentially play like a augmented reality board game uh, with the markers on being on the table and you know that uh -huh. sort of thing. And it saves you from having to sort of hold your phone and then try to look through it while you're holding something else in the other hand. So. I'm definitely getting a sense of eye strain in here. Um, okay. Is that something that can be fixed or is that just what you have to do to be able to get a normal app we're, in front of your... Um, yeah, I mean we're... Um, I'm, I've worked a little bit with trying to sort of bend the lens a little bit so that it's not as eye strainy. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think just the fact that that you're focusing on yeah, on something that's so close, yeah. regardless of how big it's blown up. Yeah. <clears throat> There's pretty much no getting around that if you're doing mono vision. Yeah. You know, you can't have your eyes converge at infinity. Right. If it's right in front of your face here. Although, yeah, this this aside from that, when I'm looking at with this, I'm really impressed with the tracking of this app. This is I. Have, you know, there's tons of these AR applications out there, but this is really tight when it is working correctly. It's It sticks right with me. Yeah. And uh, HTC One obviously powers a rel. It's really detailed, of course, because this is a, you know, right now I'm looking at a 1080p image because it's mono. Right. So I'm getting all those pixels. So now I'm in just a standard, not an augmented reality or side-by-side -side game. Uh, it's just, what is this, Modern Combat Modern 4? Modern Combat 4, yeah. So this is a FPS. Non-stereoscopic. This is a normal app that's intended to be played, you know, in front of you with your thumbs. But it has some head tracking, and I've got a controller here paired up with it. It's actually pretty cool to be, you know, have what would normally be a small experience, really up close with a pretty wide field of view. Of course, this isn't really designed to be head tracked. It's right. designed to be in your hands, so... That aspect isn't working too well, but you can see that for certain games um, that weren't even designed for this, you know, you might be able to have a workable experience, which is the whole point of the mono piece, right? Right, exactly. It sort of head tracks, but yeah, not, not real well. Yeah. It's not you can tell it's designed to be in your hand, yeah. Right, right. I mean, still, like, aiming like this works pretty darn well, probably yeah. more accurate than doing it with your hands. Right.